Hi, welcome to part 2 of lecture 5 here in Tripoli 107. In this part of the lecture, we'll be talking about wireless channels. So in the previous meeting, we talked about uh, DB calculations and the effect of some wired channels for well, telephones and fiber optics. Uh, when we talk about uh, when we have a connection, a, a connection in a, of a lossy cable, we're talking about telephone lines, but generally, uh, coaxial cables are definitely lossy lines. Okay. And some, and a fiber optic cable is used for long distances because of its low loss, uh, uh, low loss property. Okay. So, the key challenges in communicating over wireless channels is to establish a reliable communication link. Your wireless channel inherently is a broadcast signal at which if you try to transmit a signal, it will be received by a lot of users within the area. And the channel quality is actually varying with respect to time. So it's not an LTI system anymore. Okay, But there are ways where we can engineer that to make it look like an LTI system. But anyway, that's for advanced communication systems. Okay, But the challenge is still there. When you try to transmit over a wireless channel, you experience fading, you experience interference, and uh, some issues with security. Uh, an actual behavior of an antenna is to try to propagate the signal equally in all directions. This is an example of an isotropic antenna. It's just a theoretical concept. There's no such thing as an antenna that radiates equally in all directions. Okay. So the parameters is the sphere radius, the transmit power from the antenna, and the power density and an effective aperture of the antenna. If you try to transmit, if you have an isotropic antenna, okay, that is a distance r away from a receiving antenna, the receiving antenna will receive a power based on its effective aperture, the uh, power density divided by the power density times the transmitted power. Okay, so why is there, uh, why is it that the receiver antenna receives a power density? Since the isotropic antenna radiates equally in all directions and your uh, receiving antenna is only here, situated here, then it only receives that power from the transmitting antenna at this point in space. If your receiving antenna covers the whole area right here, then it can theoretically, uh, can theoretically receive all the power transmitted by the isotropic antenna. But in reality, you can't make an antenna that big Okay. So you can only harness a part of the energy that was transmitted. Okay, So this is how your uh, free space, uh, how wireless signals propagate over free space. Okay. The effective aperture can be expressed as lambda squared over 4 pi. Okay. And lambda is the wavelength of transmission. Thus, your free space path loss can be expressed as this equation in decibels. Okay. So where did this come from? Okay. So recall the definition of path loss, or sorry, loss in general. You have a power input divided by the power output. In this case, the power of the transmitted signal divided by the power of the receiving signal. This is equal to the loss. Okay. So your power input is a transmitted power from the isotropic antenna divided by the receive power at the receiving antenna right here. So the uh, transmit power is we defined as, as PT. The receive power is equal to the effective aperture which is lambda squared over 4 pi times 4 pi r squared which represents the distance, the uh, distribution of power over that sphere times the transmitted power. So we cancel that. So the loss is equal to, in linear form, is equal to 4 pi r over lambda squared. 
Okay? And if you get, uh, if you take the decibel form of this, okay, you get, uh, you can simplify that, you'll get this expression, okay? Just note that the distance R or D is in kilometers and the frequency is just, well, it's still the same as the frequency. So to get the loss, you get uh, the loss in dB, it's equal to 10 log of 4 pi R over lambda squared, okay? And that's why the factor here is 20. If we use directive antennas, or considered, uh, if, if you use directive antennas, then instead of the uh, instead of radiating the signal uh, completely over all directions, equally over all directions, the antenna focuses power in a single direction only. Okay, so it only radiates in this direction and it forgoes all of this. You create some form of gain over an isotropic antenna. And if you point that antenna towards each other, you can create a successful communication link between the two antennas. And your received power will be boost will be boosted significantly. So your total received power can now be defined by the gain of the antenna, the transmit antenna times the gain of the receive antenna times the transmit power divided by the free space path loss. In decibels, well, you just add or subtract depending on where they are. Is it in the numerator or the denominator? Okay. So, for example, consider the following transoceanic communication system with a satellite relay. So, over a satellite, you have a communication link right here. The transmit power in decibels is 35 dB watts. So, that is equal to... 10 log of the transmit power divided by 1 watt. Okay. The frequency at the uplink case is 6 gigahertz and the frequency at the downlink case is 4 gigahertz. The gain of the amplifier at the satellite is 107.1 decibels. How do you solve for the received power at the output given the antenna gains right here? So first use the free space path loss formula and compute for the loss here and the loss here. Okay? And this is what uh, how you'll get it right here. So it's from the formula. Okay? So the uplink path loss is this, downlink path loss is this. Okay? And you get this. You can just verify them using your calculators. The output power well, let's look at uh, what the signal, sorry, let's look at what the signal goes through. Okay. So the signal goes through uh, a transmit antenna with a 55 dB gain. Then it will be reduced by an uplink loss and it will be Amplified, quote unquote, by the gain of the receive antenna. It will be amplified by the gain by the amplifier in the satellite. It will be amplified again by the transmit antenna in the satellite. It will be reduced because of the uh, because of the free space path loss. It will be amplified, quote unquote, by the uh, another antenna at the receiver, and you'll get the power output. So let's just list list that. The power output is equal to the power input plus the gain of the first transmit antenna minus the loss uh, plus the gain of the receive the first receive antenna plus the gain of the amplifier uh, plus the gain of the downlink antenna minus the loss due to the downlink path minus the gain due to the receiving downlink antenna. And this is all the power calculations of this system as seen in the screen right here. So this is the formula that I've shown earlier. Substitute everything and note that you started at dB watts, then all of the other gains are uh, dimensionless quantities, therefore they're all in dB. Okay? And that means that since they're all in dB, there's the resulting uh, quantity should be in dB watts, the same as the first original one.
and we're talking about the power received here. So if since we're talking about the power received, then there should be a reference that, that was used to get the total output power. If there if you did not write dBW, you only wrote dB, then you're pertaining to a dim dimensionless quantity. But we are talking about the received power. So there should be a dimension for power, which could be watts or milliwatts. Okay? So we started with dB watts. We should end with dB watts. Okay? And that's your received power. You can convert that back to uh, linear form and you get this value for your output power. Okay? So now, uh, let's look at the small scale effects of radio waves. Okay? So this is the large scale effect of a radio wave. Now let's look at the small scale effects, how it interacts with in the environment. If it uh, hits a boundary between two media, a part of the signal will be reflected and a part of it will be refracted into the material. If the material is very rough, then it will the, the radio wave will scatter in different directions. If the wave hits a corner of the material, then the radio wave will diffract in different directions. And because of that, since uh, the wireless channel has many different objects, if you try to communicate between uh, two antennas, this, the signal can have multiple paths right here. It could uh, take multiple paths. And the received signal will be a scaled version with different time, time of arrival okay, of the original signal if you transmitted S of T. So the received signal is a weighted version. This is the weight depending on the length of the path that it passed through and a time delay okay, based on its, well, time of arrival. We can now get the impulse response of such a channel okay, with a frequency response right here. Now, just a note that the time of arrival and the gain may vary in time. How? Because there are moving, or why rather, because there are moving elements in your wireless channel, then this signal bouncing off could arrive at a different time compared to how it propagated earlier. Okay? And this, because of this multiple paths, you create an, what we call an inter-symbol interference, which is actually reserved for digital signals. But nonetheless, there is distortion because of this impulse response, which creates this frequency response. Since this, this is your frequency response, it, well, it creates distortion. Okay? So what is inter-symbol interference? Consider using pulses, which are, the, uh, which are basically the building blocks of digital communication systems. If your first pulse is S1, Okay. And a second pulse transmitted is S2 with an, uh, an impulse response defined like this. Your output received signal right here is the superposition of the impulse response or the uh, channel response created by each individual pulse. As you can see here, the the violet one is the response of the channel due to the pulse S1 and the response of the channel uh, due to S2 is the green one. As you can see, there are parts of the uh, response where they overlap and this is your inter-symbol interference. So how do we avoid the inter-symbol interference? We can look at it in the frequency domain. Okay. So in the frequency domain, your H of F could have a weird shape right here. Okay. If we multiply that with the original signal, then the, uh, the received signal will be a distorted version of the original signal. Okay. So 
we, ca we characterize this wireless channel by what we call the coherence bandwidth, where the coherence bandwidth is the, res uh, the, the bandwidth of the response of the channel where you have an approximately flat gain. Okay? And uh, what is the advantage or what is the significance of an approximately flat uh, magnitude response is again? This, uh, this approximately flat magnitude response is the same as your distortionless case. There's a bandwidth at which, in the wireless channel, at which your signal, when transmitted over that channel, will become distortionless. Okay? And that is the coherence bandwidth of a wireless channel. But normally, these channel impairments are random and are analyzed using their statistical properties, which is a topic reserved for uh, wireless communications. Right? This is ECE-153, an uh, elective. So another uh, consideration when we're talking about the wireless channel is the Doppler effect. Since your, let's say your uh, receiver is moving with respect to time, and it's moving towards, sorry, it's moving towards the transmitted, uh, the transmitter right here. Oops, there you go. It's moving towards the transmitter. Then the the change in distance between uh, this and this creates a shift in frequency, right? And that shift in frequency is due to the Doppler effect right here. What does the Doppler effect do in the frequency spectrum? Okay. The time varying nature of this channel caused by the relative motion of the transmitter and or receiver or obstructions or uh, source of multipath is uh, kind of, not kind of, spreads the signal, right? So, for example, if the uh, signal you transmitted has a power spectral density that looks like this, if it passes through a wireless channel with a very fast movement, then the received signal will have a spread uh, frequency. The frequency of the, the frequency spectrum of the signal could become... Uh, could be spread because of the Doppler shift right here. So depending on the movement of the channel, if it's, is it fast or slow? If it's fast, then the spreading becomes worse, becomes larger. If it's slow, then the spreading is not that imminent, or it's not that imminent. Uh, the spreading is not that large, okay? So the faster the channel, faster the higher the speed, the larger the spreading of your signal. And since your signal is spreading in bandwidth, then because of that, it could exceed the coherence bandwidth of your uh, wireless channel, creating distortion in the output. Okay? So that is uh, all the impairments you need to consider when you're transmitting over a wireless channel. That's the end of the lecture. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to leave a comment in the comment section below. See you next meeting.